All right, now another major investigation tonight. Peter Schweitzer added again into what he is calling the militarization of our government. According to these findings, look at this. There are now more federal bureaucrats that are armed and armed heavily than there are members of the entire United States Marine Corps. Now, that includes thousands and thousands of armed bureaucrats in agencies like the IRS, for example. This year alone, the IRS spent 700 uh, $700,000 on ammunition. Why do they need ammunition? They're not a military branch of the government. They're not a police force in the government. And from 2015 through 2019, the Health and Human Services Department spent $14 million on guns, ammo, military equipment. The veterans, the VA, spent over $11 million. The IRS, nearly $9 million. NASA spent over $350,000. Uh, $1,000, and according to Schweitzer's findings, civilian agencies in the federal government spent a whopping $1.5 billion on guns, ammo, military equipment between 2006 and 14. And this is the same people that want to take away your Second Amendment rights. Anyway, here to explain more, he is the president of the Government Accountability Institute and an investigative reporter, Peter Schweitzer. Can you explain why agencies within our government that have no police authority, military authority, why they would need to spend one dime on weapons? It's a great question, Sean. I don't know the answer to it, uh, but it's happening, and it's happening with all these government agencies that you wouldn't think uh, would need it. Uh, and what's happening here, Sean, is we see on the one hand this sort of defund the police movement, but at the same time, we see the arming of bureaucrats. Uh, and the numbers are quite clear. Uh, an organization called Open the Books ran the data, looked at the numbers, and the numbers you just cited come from the federal government itself. So what you're seeing is an expanding role for these government agencies as it relates to not only their ability to use firearms, but they are also being given arrest capabilities. And I think that's a dangerous trend, especially when you look at an agency like the IRS or the EPA, where all kinds of things can and do go wrong when these confrontations take place. Well, let me go through them all. I mean, the, we're talking about you know, a large number of agencies here, not only the IRS, I mentioned the VA, Department of Veteran Affairs, Executive Office of the President, the EOP, Health and Human Services, uh, Social Security Administration, Environmental Protection Agency, um, NASA, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services. Now, I can understand if there are instances where maybe they need security, we have people for that that are that are paid to be in that role. They would be required to have those weapons, not other people in the agencies. That makes no sense to me at all whatsoever. You're right, Sean. And the other thing that's happening is increasingly these agencies are using force or uh, showing power, that is showing guns uh, to ordinary Americans. There was an incident a few years ago in a town in Alaska, a, a town called Chicken, Nebraska. There's 17 full-time residents there. There was a dispute about whether somebody was violating the Clean Water Act. The EPA showed up with eight agents with flak jackets heavily armed. Uh, you know, what, what should be happening in these circumstances, the EPA should be showing up and local law enforcement will be happy to be there with them. Local law enforcement often knows who these people are. They know the situation. And you also, with local law enforcement, you have an independent arbitrator who, if something, you know, bad happens, you've now got an independent party explaining what happened. If the federal government shows up uh, basically with the specialists and with the armed agents, um, you're relying on one government agency to tell you the truth. And unfortunately, that's not happening as much in America anymore. So this is not just about waste and, and, and you know, misuse of government funds. This is about civil liberties and of how disputes and conflicts with the government are going to be handled. And this is certainly not the way to do it. The Washington Examiner in June of 2021 reported on EPA armed agents, 12 armed agents that had little EPA badges on and everything, uh, did a raid, were doing raids on car shops. Uh, why would the EPA armed be going into a car shop with their guns drawn? <laughs> what, there's too many emissions coming out of the facility or what? Yeah, well, you're, you're very close, Sean. Uh, the claim was that certain auto shops were violating the Clean Air Act. 
uh, rather than you know a couple of bureaucrats showing up to uh, to run tests. Maybe you have the sheriff there if you think the guy's going to be hostile. They showed up at one shop with twelve armed agents. And of course, guess what? No violations of the Clean Air Act were found. So uh, this is the problem. And, and Sean, when we see all these polls that show people distrust the government, what Washington wants to say and convince us is we distrust the government because there's all this anti-government rhetoric. No, the reason people distrust the government is precisely because of things like this. The EPA should not have armed agents. The IRS should not have armed agents. And by the way, there are government audits audits that show these agencies are not good at training these agents because that's not what they're designed to do. So let's leave it for law enforcement and let's not keep arming federal bureaucrats. It's a very dangerous route for us to go. I, great reporting. I can't believe that this is happening in these government agencies. Americans need to wake up to this and be very aware of it. Peter Schweitzer, great job as usual. We appreciate it. When we come back, all right, Gavin Newsom, not the brightest guy in the world, is now asking the Department of Justice, which in fact has been weaponized, to consider kidnapping charges against Governor Ron DeSantis and Governor Greg Abbott for moving migrants out of their states. Well, if he does that, he'd have to include himself and Joe Biden in the warrant because they're just as guilty. We'll check in with Leo 2.0, Terrell, Larry Elder there next as we continue.